message that is in my uh, new book, Fight, War, and Win. How many of you know the Bible tells us to fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life? Amen. I tell you all the time I do like to fight, but I, I'm on the right side, right? Okay. So we, we can fight. Isn't that good? Yeah. Put your little boxing gloves on. Right. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And so we're going to talk about dress to kill. Amen. Father, we ask that as we go into the word today, that Father, you go before. And Lord, God bless and minister to the people of God. We thank you for your word. Thank you for all that you give us. We bind the enemy now on every side. And Lord God, we thank you that you give us liberty and freedom. You help us to take your word and hide it in our hearts and apply it to us, to our lives, our daily lives. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. 18. Very familiar scripture, right? Okay. And again, we thank God for all of you being on and here and those that are on uh, Zoom. We say God bless you. We thank God for you today. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So the armor here in Ephesians 6 is compared to a Roman soldier. A common complaint of the soldiers was that the armor was very heavy. Without proper exercise and discipline, the armor became weighty and would cause a soldier to lay it aside, leaving him undisciplined for battle and unprotected from the enemy. One of the things that we must not do Take our armor off. You must keep your armor on. Because if your head is uncovered, that means you're exposed. Your mind. We talked about guarding your mind from contamination. So we must keep the armor on to be most effective. Our spiritual armor fulfills the same function that the physical armor fulfilled for the Roman soldier. We are called daily to walk with Christ. We must be disciplined not only to put on the armor, but to wield our weapons in battle against the forces of darkness. Our armor is to be a defense against the strategy of the devil, as well as to protect us from assault. The sword of the spirit is an offensive weapon to attack, overpower, and plunder the spoil of the powers of darkness. Lack of exercise and discipline will leave us open to assault. So we must be diligent as soldiers in the army of God, always wearing our armor and ready for battle. So in order to fight effectively, we must have a thorough understanding of our armor and how 
to use it. Number one, we must stand firm. You can't fight laying down. You can't fight quitting every day. Come on. Huh? I give up. I quit. I stop. I ain't going. Forget it. Right? You all know my favorite saying. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't slow your roll. Amen? All right. The, the word stand means to resist without yielding, to maintain a position or to persist. It also means to endure and to remain upright. Glory to God. Be willing to encounter, and if you have to face the enemy, face him. Amen. And you do it with all diligence. Come on here. Amen. When there's a crisis and someone needs, needs prayer, sis, you know what I do? Get the warriors. Come on, get up. Shake yourself. Get to sleep out your eyes. It's time to pray. Right? You got to stand. You got to fight. We got a war because we're winners. All right. As an heir of God, we are to stand in the place that is already ours. Do not worry or do not in any way surrender to an uprising of the enemy. We must keep rank. Okay. When I was in the military, of course, uh, I couldn't go over my rank and try to be, you know, walk in a position that I wasn't qualified for. I had to stay in my place. Right. So when you when you keep rank, that means you keep order. You don't just sip authority. You don't take on more than what you what you should do, right? If in 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 God even, sometimes we'll try to do that, Patty. We take on more than what we can handle. So don't do that. Just stay in your lane. You run your lane. Come on, Amen. You run it well. Glory to God. Because somebody you'll be able to pass the baton when you're finished. So we can continue. I do, do I have a church this morning? You all understand what I'm saying to you? That we each have a place so we don't have to wrestle one with another, but help one another. Glory to God. Okay, so we must keep rank, stay in position. Do not be disorderly and don't retreat. Retreat means to go back. Don't get on the battlefield and say, oh, I changed my mind. I don't want to be out here now. I, I don't think I'm qualified. Come on now. You get all around the battle. You got all this stuff. You know, you got your little weapons and all this stuff, and then you decide you're going home? No. Don't retreat. Okay. Keep unity. Armies, military, to be effective, even, even ball teams. I think we saw a little team they won last night. Well, they pulled it off at the last minute, but they had to be a team to do it. To win, we have to be a team to stay in unity. Okay? All right. Let nothing divide you so that Satan can defeat you. Stand armed and ready for battle. So Jehoshaphat did that. He stood on his ground, went forward, trusting God to deliver from the enemy. And, you know, God gave them victory, and they didn't even have to fight. All he said to do was uh, gather the army and begin to praise me. Isn't that something? That praise is a weapon? That when we praise God, it makes all kind of noise. And, you know, sometimes people don't like all that noise we make. Anyway, but uh, uh, I love it when we can praise God because it, sh it shatters the enemy. It, it does. And, and so in that, he just told them what to do. And God confounded the enemy. Okay? so. Let's say this here. This is a declaration I want to give you. It says, I will stand in faith. You can say it. Come on. I will stand in faith on the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. You, Lord, are my foundation. I will not be moved by the roar of the enemy or by negative circumstances. I will stand valiant and strong. For with you on my side, who can be against me? Now, now that's word. I'll give you a few scriptures. Write these down. I don't have time to read them all because if I did, Patty, we'd be here to about three or four, and I don't want to do that. So write this scripture down. Second Chronicles 20, verse 15 and verse 27. You have to know that when you declare the word of God, God will do 
what he said in his word because you are putting him in remembrance of his word. You're reminding him of what he already said. I wish I had a church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, Joshua 1 and 9. Give you one more. 1 Thessalonians 3, verses 6 through 8. Okay, now the girdle of truth is a part of the armor. So your loins are a picture of strength power, vigor, and maturity. They include the reproductive organs, the digestive system, and the bowels. The girdle was worn about the loins to brace you up for the fight. This is a symbol of a soldier's strength and superior ability. It kept the armor in place and supported the sword, your money and valuables, and the things that you carried around your waist. I remember being in the military and having canteen, all this stuff around, and it was all on my waist. You know what I mean? The armor, the not the armor, but the, uh, let me see, the little bullet, the little magazine. Everything was right here. So I knew where everything was, okay? But in the spirit, it's the same way. You put on the belt of truth. You gird yourself around. You got to have truth around your waist. Okay, all right. So what it means to gird, it means to prepare you for action. So whenever I put that belt on, I knew, well, we're going to go do something. Either I'm going to have to fire my weapon, I'm going to have to do something. Had it, it prepared me, let me know it's something we're going to have to do. Okay, so if your mind is girded with truth, you will be strong and vigorous with mature spiritual insight and will reproduce the word of God for his glory. Remember, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You don't want to go follow somebody that's double-minded. You, do, you definitely don't want to call yourself going to a battle and, you know, one day your mind is up, the next day your mind is somewhere else. I want somebody that's stable. Who was that that talked about being sober? Yeah, that means to be alert, watchful, on guard. All right, you got your faculties when you're sober, and we're to we're to keep sober. Okay, so let's declare this if you if you don't mind doing it. I encompass my mind with your truth, so I am ready for action. I resist all double-mindedness, and I claim that I have the mind of Christ. Okay, so the scripture for that is uh, James chapter 1, verse 8. James chapter 4, verse 8. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. John chapter 14, verse number six. Okay, keep going. The breastplate of righteousness. I'm just breaking down the armor. This is what we got to have on, okay? The breastplate covers your vital organs. How many have ever been hit and you felt like your heart was broken? Anybody? I have, right? And that, what happens when your heart gets broken? Y'all can talk to me. What, 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 what happens? Sometimes. Can't function. Can't function. Par sad. Yeah. And, and it, it's the same way in the natural. Someone have a heart attack, it really pulls out of them, and it takes them a while to come back. You know what I'm saying? Because when your heart is hurt, you it, it could kill you. All right? It could kill you. And so uh, 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 we have to keep that breastplate of righteousness around us to keep us from getting hit. Because when you get hit in your heart, you don't want to, hey, you know what? I ain't, I ain't fooling with you no more. Yeah, anybody ever said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, no, I'm going to keep you way over there. You're not going to hit me no more like that. Come on. You know you know what they say? You get a spoon and you feed them with a long handle one, the spoon way over there, and you way over here and there's a long handle. Y'all don't want to talk to me, I know. Yeah, you feed them with that, right? That ain't the way we're supposed to be, but people have said that. 
And that's because you don't want to be hurt again, right? And so, but Jesus is the one that heals. He's the one that means to say, no, I don't have to act like that. I can take you close enough, even if you hit me tomorrow. Hello? Yes, you can. They may hit you again. All right, well, God will deal with them. But you have to keep your heart open. You don't let your heart get down and shut down and, you know, say, I forget it again, okay? So the breastplate, it covers our vital organs. By protecting these vital organs, the breastplate enables a soldier to face the enemy without fear, right? We're not to have no fear, no matter what. The Bible says he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So what does it mean to be righteous? Right standing, uprightness with God, okay? Christ imparts this to us as believers. The breastplate of righteousness preserves the Christian soul and conscience, the vital organs of his spirit, man. So God is the one. Jesus takes our filthiness and gives us his righteousness. Okay, so he clothes us as we allow him to. Come on. Sister, as you was talking about your tongue and talking about, you know, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to say that. But the more you run to Jesus, can I help you today? The more you run to him, the rock, he's secure. The more, baby, he will help you. Glory to God. He will change you. And listen, don't worry about what your family and people say about you. Don't, don't worry about them little words. Oh, now you're all holy. Yes, praise the Lord. Oh, you think you're somebody. Yes. Yes, I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes, I'm the head and I'm not the tail. Glory to God. I'm above and I'm not beneath. Yes, glory to God. With all I'm on this, yes, I belong to Jesus. Come on here. Hallelujah. He's the one that cleans us up. He's the one. Amen. That even gets down in our mind things we used to think. Come on here. Amen. I mean, you don't have to think them things no more. You don't have to act that way no more. Why? Because God takes that filthiness away, and then he will impart into you that that you need to walk. So you be encouraged. You understand? You stand tall in Jesus, and you keep your eyes on him. He will help you every day. Glory to God. And if something happened and somebody provoke you, let me say this to you. If you say something you ain't supposed to say, you say, well, you provoked me. But Lord, forgive me. He still loved me. And I'm going on. And you pick up your head and you keep on moving. In Jesus' mighty, wonderful name, can we clap our hands right now and give God the glory? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So don't let the enemy throw that mess on you. You keep your eyes on the Lord. You stay in good company. Come on. You stay around people that can encourage you and keep you encouraged. Amen. Because God's going to do great things for you. And he loves you, baby. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Okay. So let's declare this. I put on your righteousness by faith. And I ask that you protect my heart that I may walk with pure motives. Help me to do that which is right and just so that I might have a clear conscience and not be afraid of evil consequences. Thank you, Lord, for courage to face the enemy without fear. Write down 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8. Hallelujah. And first John, I'm going to read this one. First John uh, chapter one, verses seven and verse nine. I'm going to read those, okay? Write this scripture down as well. Romans 5, 17 through 19. Let me get to first John. Hallelujah. First John chapter one, verse seven. It says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 
verse 9, and this is something we all need to keep with us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So whenever you do something wrong, you don't let the devil beat you up and people beat you up and all this stuff here. First John 1 and 9, Lord, your word declares, if I confess my sin, I'm confessing whatever it is. You're faithful and just, come on, to forgive me. When he forgives you, he throws it away. It's gone. He don't see it no more. Amen. So when people try to bring things up about your past, you say, well, okay, well, you remember that, but I, I'm not them no more. I'm a new creature in Jesus. Old things are passed away, sis. Behold, all things become new. He blots out our transgressions and our sins. Come on, this is why when you get delivered, you know, if you're reliving stuff over and over again, there's something wrong with that because I don't believe we're supposed to just relive stuff. Come on. Amen. When he cleanses you, he cleanses you. He delivers you. It's done and it's over with. I believe when I was here before, I talked about when I first came here and and and, and I was standing somewhere up here and uh, Mother Jerry ministered to me about my mama and all this stuff here. I dropped that stuff right there. It's gone. I don't carry that. Come on. It's gone. Done. Amen. When it's done, you know it. You ain't carrying it no more. Amen. So as you go home, realize, hey, I dropped all that stuff up here. All right. If you coughed it out, blowed it out, snot it out, cried it out, whatever you did it out. <laughs> Brother Randy, I'm trying to be cool today. Huh? Whatever you did, come on here. Amen. Then you get them areas clean with the Holy Ghost. I wish I had a church. If somebody, my baby was here to run, I'd have Jeremiah run to the back and run to the front. Glory to God. But he ain't here. Amen. Praise the Lord. But let me tell you something. When you're free, you know it. Clap them hands. When you're free, we ain't going home the same way, brother. <laughs> Glory to God. You go home another way. Amen. You know, my chains are gone. We sing a song about that. Chains are gone. They're bound. I ain't chained no more. Come on here. Ain't no more feathers. So you can go on to the next. And this is why we want to give you this word to tell you, go to the next. Come on here. Keep going. But you got to keep your armor on. Let me, let me get back. And I'll get off. And I don't want to get off. All right. Hallelujah. I gave you those scriptures, right? Okay. The shoes. Okay. You, you got to put shoes on when you get ready to go to war. You know, I got these little house shoes on. I, I normally don't do that. But the Lord told me, it says, I was in my room and I told Callie, I said, well, I, I normally put these other little shoes on and I was getting ready and I had my other little shoes on that I wore earlier. And the Lord said, take them shoes off and put them other shoes on. I said, but I don't normally. He said, take them off. Guess what I did? I took them off and I put them in, I put them in my suitcase. Come on here. Amen. But I am covered. Tell somebody I'm covered. Glory to God in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, God. So the shoes, the gospel of peace. Now, the Lord gave me a revelation. I did a devotional about God giving us his peace. When God gives you his peace, you're secure. Now, I never saw it. It's in John. Forgive me, I didn't get that scripture but it's in john i think chapter 14 he said my peace i leave with you when you got god's peace no matter what you got to go through you will walk through it so the gospel the shoes represent the gospel of peace being prepared okay means to be ready or dressed in readiness which is a vital or is vital for us as soldiers a soldier's shoes had metal cleats, which made them more sure-footed in battle. So, you know, football players, they have cleats and all this stuff here. But when you have these kind of shoes, then it, it's, it, it, when you're on the ground, you can you have a sure footing. You won't slip like some little, little princess shoes I had on earlier. Okay. Yeah, I could have slipped. Y'all don't want to talk to me, do you? And the Lord said, take them shoes off. Okay, don't don't give no place to the enemy when he tell you to do something. I heard the brother talk about God told him 
uh, don't get that other phone. Come on. He tells us stuff. I'm not trying to be condemnation now. Come on. He tell us stuff and we don't do it. Guess what? Somebody said we suffer. The consequences. Ain't nobody fault. Come on. Then we have to own it. So if I had a did wrong and then I slipped and fell, I, oh, that devil. No, you, you crazy thing. You didn't do what God said. We blame the devil for everything, don't we? Come on here. The devil did this and the devil that and I'm binding. And the Lord's sitting at you. Now, the devil ain't had nothing to do. It's the truth. So when I do something wrong, I can't blame nobody but me. All right, let me keep going now. I'm not beating you up. I'm just telling you the truth. So our feet represent our walk with the Lord. Our walk is the witness of our speech, behavior, and our attitude. So how I present myself, all right, comes from the way I, I behave, my attitude, you know, come in here snotty and mean. You'll say, well, 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 what's wrong with you? Looking all crazy? Come on here. Hair all standing up, you know, because, you know, you know, we've done this. We want everybody to know when we're going through something. Maybe nobody here. Nobody here does that, right? Brother Randy, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know, you're trying to be you try to be right, but then you want people to know something is wrong. Some things we don't need to show. You get in your prayer closet and tell God about it. Duke it out with him. I thought I was going to talk about intercession today, and the Lord changed it. He said, no, we want you to go this way. But a real gap stander, a real person that can pray through, uh, will pray through, amen, in order to get through. You don't tell everything. Some things I go through, don't nobody know. <laughs> Come on here. God is the best person to talk to. Yeah, you may have a best buddy, but they may not even understand nothing what you're going through. Come on. But God understands everything. You can give him to him. All right? Okay. So, again, our feet represent our walk with the Lord. Okay? So, listen. To be shod means to bind under or tie up. To be ready to receive marching orders. So when you put on your shoes, you should have almost everything on. There's some other offensive pieces you need. But them shoes, when you get to them shoes, you say, man, I'm about ready now. You know, and sometimes I put on my warfare attire. And when I get to them shoes, man, I'm ready for battle. When I lace up them boots, Kim, I'm ready to go. Right? I'm ready to fight. Yeah. Because then I know, okay, what's up? Sometimes the Lord had me put all this stuff on. I said, okay, what am I going to do now? What, what, what's going on? Then, I, then I'm looking. Y'all y'all don't y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm ready. You understand? And sometimes he said, I just want you to put it on. I said, well, what? Yeah. In the military, they do that. Sometimes they would, they would get us all ready, send us to the box. Here we are, standing there looking like, okay, so what's going on? Nothing. Just wanted to know if you're ready. <laughs> Just want to know if you got everything together. Just want to know that if we have to put you on a plane, can you go? Come on here, somebody. Go over to God. So if God called you at 2 o'clock in the morning and made you get your clothes on and told you to get ready, would you do it? Would you be ready to fight for Sister Patty in the middle of the night and you don't know what's going on? There you go. I've had to do that. I've had to fight all night. Come on here. And we don't know, Sister, what's coming our way. We don't know what God will call us to do, but we better be ready. So we will hinder our progress time and time again if we do not continue to move when God says move. Be quick to obey God. Be quick to listen. Hearken to the voice of the Lord. So the gospel, as we know, is the good news of Jesus Christ. Okay? And he gives us peace. This peace is freedom from strife. 
It comes from God through conflict with the enemy. Even though the enemy rages without, we can have the peace of God. It is a walk founded in reconciliation. So let's declare this, if you will. I shod my feet with your gospel and peace. I desire to walk today in a quiet, unquarrelsome manner. Thank you for keeping my feet from harm and guiding my path. My feet will not be moved from the gospel, for I am not ashamed of the good news. Your gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Now, if you will, you can write down Romans 1, 16. Romans 1, 16 and Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And one more here. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 66, verses 8 and 9. But let's talk a little bit about the shield of faith. The shield was a defensive weapon usually carried on the left arm and was used to protect the entire body of a soldier. The surface was kept bright with oil. It reflected the sun to bind the enemy. It helped to deflect the enemy's blows okay so a shield represents protection and security our shield of faith works in cooperation with the other pieces of the army to quench the fiery darts of doubt fear and unbelief and to blind the enemy he could be defeated by your armor okay so faith is simply believing and accepting and appropriating what god has said Faith requires a total trust in the Lord Jesus in all things. We have to trust him, believe him, have faith, rely on him. Amen, all of that, okay? So let's declare this. Thank you for being a shield to me, Lord. I put my trust in you. I choose to walk by faith, not by sight or circumstance. I will speak the word of faith. I will ask in faith and will not doubt. Now, once again, faith is trusting God. All right, that's what it is. Okay, so if you will write these down here, Colossians chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. I believe in the scriptures and getting these scriptures in your belly, okay? Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 6. James chapter 4, verse number 7. Let's go to the helmet of salvation. The helmet protects the head. It often bore signia or insignia or ornaments identifying the army to which the soldier belonged. The helmet, uh, the helmet, the hope of salvation guards our mind from the enemy's darts. Our mind directs the use of our shield, sword, and all movements of the body. It must be protected at all times. Our mind is the battleground between the flesh and the spirit. A disciplined soldier will not yield to the flesh, but will be strong in the spirit. Okay? The Bible says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, right? Okay? Okay. So let's declare this. Lord, I put my hope and trust in you. The helmet of salvation shall be as a helmet of deliverance to me. You have set my mind free from the darts of the enemy. 
Today, I will renew my mind by the word of God. I refuse to entertain the thoughts of doubt and unbelief that the enemy will bring to me. I bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I will concentrate on those things which pertain to life and peace. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, let me give you this. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Now I'm going to read Romans 12. I'm going to read 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Hallelujah. Okay, let me give you this one. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That perfect means complete, y'all. It means whole, and we can walk there. We can walk in that, okay? Okay, that was Romans uh, 12 and 2. And then you can write down um, Hebrews 5, chapter 5, verse 9. And in the last one here, 1 Peter 1 and 13. Let's talk a little bit about the sword of the spirit. The sword is both defensive and offensive weapon, okay? It defends the soldier from the enemy's assault, but it's also a symbol of power and authority because when he know how to wield the sword, the word of God, Jesus did that when he came up, when the enemy called himself coming up against him. He used the word against Satan. Okay. The sword of the spirit is the word of God, quickened, made alive by the Holy Spirit. The wielding of the sword is only effective when you have all the other pieces in place. Okay. So let's declare this. Lord, your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides between that which is spiritual or godly and that which is soulish or fleshy. The Holy Spirit will give me in the hour of need a mouth of wisdom which none of my opponents will be able to resist or refute. Write this down. Hebrews 4 and 12. Glory to God. 1 Samuel 17 and 54. Psalm 149 verse number 6. So verse 18 of Ephesians uh, chapter 6 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Finally, we're living in an hour, beloved, where we must stand against all odds. We have to stand no matter what. God will give us all we need to stand firm in him, being confident that he will give us victory every time. I encourage you, beloved, stand armed and ready for battle in the mighty name of Jesus. Can we stand to our feet today? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, for your word. We thank you that you help us. You know how to dress us. And we want to make sure that we stay dressed, armed, ready for battle, dressed to kill, 
every battle you take us in, God, we, we have that ability to come out with the victory because we're on the winning side. I thank you for your precious men's service and maid service. I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for them this weekend. And I pray, God, as they go home, they will go home with the arsenal of the word of God to continue to maintain the deliverance and healing and to go on in you to continue to move forward. I pray for every speaker and those that have spoke this weekend. And we bind all backlash, all retaliation. We bind every evil attack that would come from any kind of way, north, south, east, or west, even coming at their minds, coming through family, indirect assault. We come against now mental warfare. We come against physical warfare. We come against financial warfare. We come against familiar spirits. We come against divination. We come against every evil plot of the enemy in Jesus' name. And we thank you for covering each and every one in the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for every prayer that's been prayed. We ask God that you continue the work that you have begun in us, your people. We thank you for healing. We thank you for wholeness on today. And we ask that you complete the work that you have begun. We thank you for the workers of this precious camp. I thank you for Brother Kevin, Sister Patty. I thank you for Crystal and Dan. I thank you for Brother Mark. I thank you for the children. I thank you for those that are here. And we pray now a covering over them, a protection over them. You watch over them. You watch over, Lord God, this precious camp, all the things that's needed. Father, we pray for provision. We pray, God, that you would send in, Lord God, all that's needed, Father God, in this season, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for strengthening today. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. For the prayer team, I pray, God, all the prayer warriors, that you strengthen them as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Father God, pour back in as they poured out, as they labored, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for the worship. Thank you for my dear brother Ray. Thank you, Lord, that we run these laps, Lord God, that every song that you've given, Father has ministered under the unction of the Holy Ghost. So God, we want to say thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, that you have allowed us to run these laps this weekend. We thank you. I thank you. Hallelujah. For giving me strength. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord, because you're so good and you are so kind. Thank you for those that are on Zoom right now. We ask that you bless each and every one, that you minister to them as well. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let your perfect, complete, and whole will be done in the lives of all that are here. And Lord God, as we take our journey, we ask, oh God, that you go before. Give everyone safe travel and mercy home in Jesus' name. Keep the enemy at bay. We bind old goon and old shoe. Every evil road, God, is bound right now. Every accident spirit, in the name of Jesus, we bind death gods now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord God, for safe passageway. Thank you for the angels that will be encamped around about us in the mighty name of Jesus. And when they reach home, let all be well. In Jesus' name. And we thank you and we praise you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We thank God for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. This ends our camp for Memorial Camp. We'll be back. Amen. The Lord say July. Is that right? Praise the Lord. Let's keep everybody in prayer. God bless you. We love you.